Hey, what is up guys? DRC3 here, back with another Black Clover mobile video, and today we're going to be doing a tier list for all the SSR characters currently in the game on the JP and KR versions. This is going to be a bit of a longer video because we need to talk about, you know, everybody's kit who is in the game so far for this video, and then every video afterwards, it'll be a little bit shorter because we're not going to have to go over everybody's kit, but, you know, as of right now, the game is brand new, and most people probably don't know what these kits do, so we're going to talk about what every person's kit does, just, we'll try to go over it quickly and then we'll place these characters into the tier list so the very first character we're going to be placing is going to be the seasonal asta seasonal asta is really actually pretty decent because if you have an active buff going for asta then he has a 50 percent chance to deal an additional attack which is pretty good but then there's the downside of it only inflicts uh 70 of your original attack but that's still pretty good because that's an additional attack and that you normally wouldn't get all within one attack so that's kind of wild and really good then he has wild dance which is his second move and attacks after applying increased attack to yourself has an 80 percent chance of applying plus 20 percent stamina increase to yourself so increasing your own stamina is also good uh, and then an attack of 135%. Accelerated Assault is his special skill. It grants you an extra turn when attacking an enemy whose HP is at 80% or above. That's crazy. That's really good. Attacks after applying 30% uh, increased damage done to yourself upon attacking a boss. So he gets extra damage against a boss as well. So Seasonal Asta, very good. Obviously, he has the passive of applying 12% increased attack at the start of a wave. So he gets extra attack at the start of a wave. From his passive he also has a unique passive that applies four percent increase attack at the start of your turn stacks up to three times the buff cannot be removed so these unique passives and the passive make him very very good and so seasonal asta that would make me put him all the way up in s tier because he is going to be a carry character now in terms of seasonal characters i wouldn't say he's the best seasonal character so this tier list is not going to go in any particular order it's just going to be kind of uh random where these characters go in each tier so i might put yami up here for example next to asta that doesn't mean asta is better than yami and then also keep in mind this is just a general tier list it's not saying who's good for arena who's good for pve who's good for boss fights it's just in general who is good in the game and this is just my opinions of course if you guys have different opinions let me know down in the comments i'm always open to changing the tier list in the future so moving on the next character that we have to look at is charlotte so charlotte has a skill called thorn whip a thorn vine whip and attacks after applying 30 percent increased damage done that's pretty good to yourself if an enemy has a mark okay the second skill is called thorn garden applies a reduced defense level two to all enemies for two turns that's actually insanely good reducing enemies defense is always really really good in any gacha game ever has a 50 percent chance to apply a mark to an enemy for two turns so you want to do this skill first basically then you want to do her first skill and that's going to give you the extra increased damage so that's honestly not a bad reduces damage or reduces defense applies a mark increases damage on this skill pretty good right the next skill the special skill applies attack reduction to all enemies for two turns this is similar to what nozelle does uh attack reduction is okay it's not like i prefer defense down right rather than attack down but it is going to help your team have a little bit more survivability if the enemy is strong like it's in a boss fight uh so attack reduction i really i think it shines in boss fights but other than that it's it's not great for like arena and stuff like that has a 40% chance of applying bleed to an enemy dealing continuous damage for two turns so honestly not bad overall and I know I'm not going over the combined or unit attacks because those are just uh, I don't feel like they're super important to uh, going over the overall where we're going to be placing the characters because you're not always going to be able to pull off the combined attack you're not always going to be able to pull off the united attack but you are going to always be able to do these three so that's kind of why I'm only looking at those three and the passes when we go ahead and place them so the passive skill applies 2.5% increased damage done if there's at least one opponent with a mark, easy. And then unique passive applies 20% defense reduction to an enemy with a mark for two turns. That is crazy good. Crazy, crazy, crazy good. So because of all that, I honestly almost want to put Charlotte... Um, in S tier, but I don't feel like she's quite as good as Asta and his damage and the additional attacks and stuff like that. So for now, I think I'm going to put Charlotte into A tier because I think defense reduction is honestly really, really good. I think that's super valuable in my opinion and in any gacha game that she's going to be decent. The next character we're going to be placing is Fugelion Vermillion, and he has his own banner out right now. And some people are probably asking, should you be summoning on this banner? Long story short, 
I'm going to say probably not. But let's go ahead and take a look at his kit. So his first skill is called Ray of Extinction, and it applies a defense reduction to an enemy for two turns if they are taking continuous damage from burn. Defense reduction is still good, right? But they have to be taking damage from a burn, and burn doesn't do a ton of damage. That's the problem with Fugalion. The second skill is Onslaught of the Flame Lion. has a 50% chance of applying burn to an enemy, dealing continuous damage for two turns. That's only a medium chance essentially of applying burn so that's not a great chance of like it's not it's not very good uh that's okay his special skill attacks after applying 40 percent increased damage done to yourself if an enemy is taking continuous damage okay so you increase damage if the enemy is taking continuous damage from a burn for example uh and then applies burn to an enemy dealing continuous damage for two turns this one automatically applies a burn so that's actually decent uh it feels like you have to use his special skill first though and have the burn going to be able to actually make use of his damage and that's the problem with fugelion i feel like it's just like it relies too much on the burn to make complete use of his kit and it makes him a little bit wonky to use and then when it comes to his passive skill his passive skill five percent damage increase 3.5 percent damage increase when attacking enemies with burn so there's the burn thing again and then unique passive upon using skill two applies one burn debuffs to enemy dealing continuous damage for two turns so that that's a guaranteed uh unique passive but i mean it's still i i don't know i just i feel like it relies too much on the burn for him to do damage and that's what i don't like about him so i think for now i'm gonna put him kind of in c tier we're mad like i'm okay with him i'm not really sure he could be better in the future depends on how his kit goes he could go up or down uh, i really just depends we'll have to see how he compares to other cards and really get his uses in the game right so based on his kit we're gonna put him in that tier the next character is jack the ripper and his first skill is called Blade Rampage. Has a 60% chance of applying bleed to an enemy, dealing continuous damage for two turns. Bleed is good. 60% is good. That's more than a medium chance. And then this guy is all about attack. He will do a lot of damage, right? You can see his typing right here. And then for his second skill, Enhanced Physical Ability. Like, this says it all, right? Um, implies increased penetration level four to i believe that's penetration if i'm understanding it right uh, applies increased penetration level four to yourself for two turns that's good applies increased crit rate level four to yourself for one turn which is good has a 60 percent chance of applying uh, special defense i i believe that's special defense i could be wrong i i'm gonna assume special defense increase level one to yourself for two turns so that's all like insanely good right and that's what makes him like jack honestly pretty solid of a like he's a solid unit his special skill has an 80 percent chance of applying bleed to the enemy dealing continuous damage for two turns that's 80 percent is a high chance that's pretty good De bleed has pretty good damage attacks with 10 percent increased crit damage for each buff you have so this is like the difference between jack and fugelion right he gets his own buffs and stuff like that regardless of whether they're bleeding he doesn't need the bleed to proc to be able to be useful and that's why fugelion's not as good but like this he gets attack uh attacks with 10 percent increased crit damage for each buff you have just having a buff like that's it's so simple right so jack strong uh fairly good kit his passive applies 7% increased damage done upon attacking an enemy with continuous damage. Who's taking continuous damage. So this one, to get this passive, you do have to have him taking continuous damage from bleed. But this is the only thing really in his kit so far that requires that to be applied in order for it to happen. And then you have the unique passive applies a sever to yourself for one turn upon using skill 2. Sever applies increased damage done to yourself proportionate to your remaining HP max 30 percent. i don't know if i'm reading that right applies increased damage done to yourself proportionate to your remaining hp i think that means applies increased damage done it's increasing the amount of damage you do proportionate to your remaining a hp that's how it's it's weirded so wordly on this website i swear but it's what we got uh so that's honestly not bad that means he's going to do more damage according to his health i believe so that's pretty good that severed ability is pretty decent and so for that i think jack is honestly going to be a tier like he could do some decent damage i think he's going to be up there with uh charlotte like i think he's going to be pretty useful in the game next we have leopold vermilion his first skill is called crimson flame applies 50 percent life steal to yourself before attacking that's is it 50 percent of the attack or 50 percent of like 
your own health because if that's the case that's that's kind of broken i don't actually have him in the game so this is one of those characters that i feel like you go either way uh, we'll have to take a look at the rest of his kit. His second skill is called Flame Burst. Attacks after applying increased magic attack proportionate to your HP to yourself. Okay, and then maximum 30%. Has a 50% chance of applying burn to the enemy, dealing continuous damage for two turns. And you know what? Leopold is already better than Fugelion because, once again, doesn't rely on the burn to make use of his skills. He's getting these effects regardless of the burn. And then Spiral Flame is his special skill. Attacks after applying 50% increased damage done to yourself if an enemy is taking continuous damage from burn. Okay, I, I go and say that and then immediately after the skill afterwards uh, proves me wrong. But you know, he still has this stuff right here. Like he has other parts that don't require the burn. Applies 30% life steal to yourself before attacking. So honestly, let's read through this again one more time. This part, this part specifically. Attacks after applying 50% increased damage done. So he gives himself an increased 50% damage done. And then if an enemy is taking continuous damage from burn. So he's going to do an extra 50% damage if the enemy's burning. That's honestly a lot of extra damage for the special skill. That's interesting and that's honestly pretty good. And I feel like he's still going to do a decent amount of damage regardless of whether he has the burn going or not. And then this right here is just kind of insane. Applies 50% life steal to yourself before attacking. I don't know guys, this one's kind of hard to place. His passive applies 5% increased damage done. That's such a simple passive, okay? But you know what, an extra 5% damage will take it. Unique passive applies 2% increased damage done to yourself upon attacking each enemy with a burn debuff. So you get an extra 2% damage upon attacking each enemy with a burn debuff. That's not a lot. I feel like his passives aren't as good as they could be. And so like, even though he does have the life steal and stuff, I feel like his kit is kind of gutted. I'm gonna put him in, in B tier for all right. I think he's gonna be all right. I don't know that he's gonna be super, super good yet. I don't feel like like he's he's definitely not Fugelion tier. I think he's better than Fugelion still. And it, it hurts me to say that because Fugelion's sick, right? But he's just not he's not all there. So yeah, that's where we're at with him. The next character we're gonna place is Lotus. Oh man, this guy I wanted him on my reroll summons. Actually did not get him because I took a skill card uh and an SSR pull over you know having Lotus because I got Lotus but not with the skill card. So I I had to make some decisions. But anyways, the first skill is called Emit Smoke, has a 50% chance of applying 15% decreased stamina to an enemy decreasing stamina. Stamina is good. From what I understand in arena so if you have if you played arena at all and you wonder why like why do some of their characters get to go first before your characters why do some of your characters get to go first vice versa i believe that's because of the amount of stamina so when you have lotus decreasing the uh enemy stamina it's going to basically guarantee that your characters get to go first so that's what makes lotus very very good his second skill is called smoke explosion applies extend debuff duration to an enemy for one turn so if you use this uh and then <laughs> use the extend debuff it's kind of insane Saying. applies reduced damage uh resolve i'm not sure how that's actually worded there uh applies reduced damage resolve to an enemy for two turns so that's not bad at all and then his special skill poison of the fallen king applies incapacitate level three to all enemies for two turns so imagine you use this right and you're in a, a PvP match, you incapacitate all enemies for two turns, and then you go and use the smoke explosion, which extends the debuff for another turn. That's kind of ridiculous, right? And then it has a 50% chance to remove all buffs from an enemy ridiculous has a 50 percent chance to apply special defense reduction so it's going to reduce their defense to an enemy for two turns like he's so freaking ridiculous reducing defense removing buffs incapacitating them extending the duration like he's so crazy right decreasing their stamina giving yourself the advantage like lotus is literally like the most broken character in the game right now his passive applies 12 percent increased magic attack and then his unique passive applies 12 percent increased magic attack too so he's just getting even more attack <laughs> oh man lotus is so good so with that i'm definitely going to put lotus uh where are you lotus is definitely going to s tier up there with the carries he's going to be 
probably uh, probably able to carry you through the game so if you're just getting into the game or you're looking to re-roll lotus is definitely a character for you like he's so so good the next character we're going to talk about is mars his first skill is called mineral fragment has a 60 percent chance to taunt the enemy for two turns that is really good a character that can taunt is pretty decent honestly not uh too many characters in the game can taunt uh, he might be the only character in the game that can talk actually uh, other than that's an SR, SSR character rather uh, so that that's pretty good has a 60% chance to taunt his second skill is called mineral salt has a 40% chance of applying stun to the enemy for one turn and then applies defense reduction to the enemy for two turns if they are under the effect of stun so you do have to have them stun first this this part kind of sucks that so you have to have a stun first I don't like that I wish he just did the defense reduction without having them stun that make him better but he would pair very well you can see here with lotus because lotus can you know incapacitate or stun them so if you use lotus and then use the defense reduction with this guy like Mars and Lotus, ah, probably freaking insane together. And then has a 40% chance to stun, so he can stun himself, but you know, it's a, is what it is. His special skill is called, oh, I don't even know how to say this, Leviathan. I'm going to say it like that. And it applies Fortify, level 3 to yourself for two turns. That's good. That's going to help you survive. Has a 25% chance of applying Extend Debuff Duration to an enemy for one turn. Yeah, Mars and Lotus together, freaking insane. Like the pairing, oof, oof. Oof, could be absolutely insane. His passive, 5% reduced damage taken while being attacked and on top of drawing aggro. Could be very, very good. Unique passive, applies debuff block to all allies for one turn at the start of combat. Oh, man. This guy is actually pretty good. He's probably one of the best ssr tanks in the game and for that reason i feel like for right now i'm going to put him in a tier i because of the fact that he does need the stun to get the defense down and i feel like he almost has to be paired with lotus to be fully like make full use of his kits but if he he there is an argument to be made for s tier he could be moved up to s tier potentially in my opinion let me know down in the comments what you guys think but for now mars going in a tier the next character is the seasonal mimosa vermilion her like she's crazy her first skill is called plant energy grants the ally with the lowest hp HP recovery equal to 120% of Matt K. Like, I'm supposed to understand that. I have, uh, I'm going to assume magic attack. I think that's magic attack. There was supposed to be a period in between here and somebody messed up. So, grants the ally with the lowest HP equal to 120% of magic attack, which is pretty good. And then has a 45% chance to apply increased special plus one defense something to an ally whose HP has been recovered. Okay, special point. Okay. Okay, yeah, SP. I don't know. Special... What does SP stand for? It, it should say it over here. No, like... Ah, okay, anyways. Yeah, I'm just... I'm dumb for this part. I, I don't understand this. I Abbreviations kill me. Anyways, has a 45% chance to apply increased SP plus one to an enemy... To an ally whose HP has been recovered. So, yeah. Take that how you will. Her second skill is called Flower Garden. And this grants all allies HP recovery. That's insane. All allies HP recovery. Equal to 120% of a magic attack. Really, really good. Applies a buff extension for one turn to his designated ally. Really good. Applies increased damage re resistance. Incre applies increased damage resistance. I couldn't figure that out earlier. I think I called it resolution. It applies increased damage resistance to all allies for two turns. That's actually insane. That's really, really good. And then like her special skill down here dream of recovery this is where it gets really good grants all allies hp recovery equal to 180 percent of magic attack applies increased defense to all allies for two turns resurrects a designated ally by 30 percent with 30 percent hp with 30 percent hp she's so broke she's so broken so good so necessary like we haven't even looked at her passives yet her passive applies five percent reduced damage taken okay she gives her more survivability we love that for her support her unique passive resurrects an ally with 50% HP when using a special skill. Okay, she's a little bit crazy. So Mimosa, absolutely up here in S tier. She is so, so good, guys. Like, actually good. Next, we have Nozelle. Nozelle is actually the character I got on the reroll summons. And I have been, honestly, a little bit underwhelmed with him. Uh, but he does have his uses. So let's talk about what he does. His... 
First skill has a 60% chance to apply poison to an enemy, dealing continuous damage for two turns. That poison doesn't do a whole lot of damage, I'll tell you right now. His second skill is called Silver Whip. It applies magic attack reduction level two to all enemies for two turns applying magic attack reduction to all enemies for two turns is okay i haven't noticed that much of a difference in attack though i feel like i still take pretty good amounts of damage even when i'm using this skill so like in boss battles honestly it hasn't even helped me that much i don't even know like how it, it, it's okay it's okay. The special skill applies weapon disarm level three to all enemies for two turns. I'm not even sure like he's he's doing these debuffs, right? But I feel like they don't do a lot in terms of helping me survive. They're supposed to basically lower the amount of attack they do and keep them from hurting me as much. But I feel like it just doesn't do a whole lot. And he himself doesn't do a whole lot of damage. And that really hurts him overall. Now, if he did like defense down or something like that, it would make him a lot better but in my opinion having used him through the majority of the game up to chapter three where we're at right now uh he's just not all that great his passive applies 2.5 percent increased damage done if there's at least one opponent with a debuff that's easy enough to achieve you can debuff enemies really easily so that's good you're pretty much always getting that his unique passive if you get it applies 12 percent fortify to yourself if you have three or more sp so i mean he's okay He's just not like great. I'm going to put him. He's kind of in my mind. I'm going to put him with Fugelion at meh. Like he's not D tier. He's not. He doesn't lack all usefulness. He's just he's eh. And that really pains me to say because I do have him at UR, you know, and it, he's just he's OK. He's just OK. The next character is Radis. We have to talk about his sk first skill is called Jimmy. <laughs> I love how they're named after <laughs> this is the best kit. Jimmy has a 40% chance of applying poison to an enemy dealing continuous damage for two turns. Okay, not bad. It's just a debuff. David applies increased defense level two to all allies for two turns. That's really good. That makes him decent. Carl is a special skill. Grants all allies a barrier equal to 140% of magic attack for two turns. That's really, really good. And then has a 50% chance to apply increased endurance to an ally for two turns. Decent. Grants debuff immunity to allies for two turns. Debuff immunity, I think this is going to get like way overlooked by people, but debuff immunity is insane and I think it's going to come in like clutch later on in the game when debuffs really become important to the game. I feel like right now they're not super big, but later it's going to be massive to the game. And so right now, I feel like maybe he's not S tier, but he's definitely he's going to be useful literally because of that one line right there, that one line makes Radis good. His passive skill upon being attacked has a 30% chance to apply taunt to the attacker for one turn. That's good. And then applies special defense plus seven. So with his unique passive overall, I think he's going to be the fact that he can just nullify debuffs, right? I, I he's going to where I think we put him in all right. I think we put him in all right for right now. He's all right. He's not super useful because I feel like debuffs aren't like a big thing, you know? It's not that big of a, a detriment if you have debuffs on you. Eventually, it might become a bigger thing where debuffs are like, ah, oh, we can't have them, and then he'll move up in the tier list. But for right now, debuffs just aren't that, like, you're bleeding, you're poisoned, you're burning, it's like whatever, right? But eventually, it might be more important, so we're going to put him in B tier. He might go up in tiers later on in the game. The next character we have to rank is Rill from the Aqua Deer. His first skill is called Design. If you have four or more special points, applies increased magic attack level to yourself before attacking. Okay, but four or more special points might be kind of hard to obtain. His second skill is called Coloring Game. Applies defense reduction to all enemies for two turns. That's really good. We love anyone that does defense reduction, right? Has a 50% chance to remove two buffs from an enemy. That's really good as well. Removing enemy buffs is pretty good. And then his special skill, Spring of Restriction, applies incapacitate to all enemies for two turns. It's just a guaranteed incapacitate you put that with lotus like that could be really really good right that could be really strong has a 40 percent chance to apply stun to an enemy for one turn could also be really really good so like he has some usefulness overall i think he could be very useful his passive applies seven percent increased damage done when attacking a defender that's okay his unique passive upon using skill one applies a debuff extension for one turn to enemy like he's honestly uh if you get him fully leveled up i feel like he could be a pretty good like character to debuff enemies and work together with other debuffers he could be actually fairly useful overall 
I don't feel I feel like because of this skill right here it's kind of holding him back to get the four special points you need the four special points to make full use of his damage and I don't really like that and then it's only a 50% chance to remove buffs it's a medium chance so I don't really like that and so because of those things I'm gonna put him in a tier for now I think he's good I just don't think he's as good as like these characters up here like Lotus you know Asta Mimosa all very good in their own respects uh, real He's decent, he just has some drawbacks. The next character we're gonna place is Sally from the Eye of the Midnight Sun. Her first skill is called Whip. It applies 90% life steal to yourself. I'm gonna leave that there. 90% life steal. That's insane. <laughs> uh, but that's all that skill does, okay? That's that's pretty insane though. And then she has inject a strengthening dose, applies increased magic attack level four to the ally for two turns, applies increased crit rate to the ally, has a 60% chance to extend buff duration on an ally for two turns that it could be really really good now the problem is it's only a single target ally and that's where i find the problem with her uh if it was all allies it'd be much much better but i mean when used in the right circumstance it could have its usefulness right her special skill is called sticky salamander applies increased all attack to all allies for two turns that makes her really good increasing attack all for all allies that is that's a dub she's like one of the only characters that does that so that's really really good applies increased crit damage to all allies with the same attribute for two turns now that does limit her you do have to run other characters with the same attribute but still she could be very very solid if that didn't say the same attribute right here she would be going in s tier right but because this has the same attribute that holds her back like that one skill right there could put her in s tier if it didn't say that her passive skill grants hp recovery equal to 10 percent of maximum hp at the start of a wave her unique passive increases the increased all attack level of special skill by one so i mean Sally is decent. I don't like how she only targets one character. I feel like she goes in all right with Radis because of this skill right here only targeting one character and because the or sorry, this skill right here only targeting one character and this skill having the limitations it has with having like the same attribute ally on your team. So those things really hold Sally back and that's why she's going to go into B tier for all right with Radis. She might be able to go up to A tier later. She might go down. It just depends on what characters they add into the game and what content they add into the game the next character we have is william vengeance twisted roots is his first skill has a 40 percent chance to transform an enemy into a tree for one turn okay i assume they can't do anything while they're a, a tree you know and then the beating of the magic tree is skill two applies increased attack level four to an ally for two turns applies increased special defense level four to an ally for two turns when an ally stamina is at 50 percent or below has a 60 percent chance to apply 10 percent increased stamina to them that's really not that that's okay 10 percent is not great it's uh, um, eh eh that's that's eh but increasing an ally's attack and speed uh special defense sorry not speed i believe that's special defense it might it might be speed i might have been calling it special defense this whole time maybe it was just speed i don't know with this website it's so hard to decipher sometimes guys i apologize if at any point i have messed up and said the wrong thing you guys can understand the game just came out but um yeah so anyways single target for vengeance i don't like that it's a single target ally i wish it was a multiple target ally if this did it for all allies it would make him good since there are other characters in the game who do things for all allies it makes him inherently worse than those characters right his first special skill is called magic tree arrival applies fortify level three to all allies for two turns fortifying all allies is solid right applies counter attack to the ally with the highest attack for one turn also that's pretty decent like his special skill saves him. I feel like his regular skills, though, this one's good. This one's good. But this one in particular is just kind of meh to me. His passive has a 30% chance of applying 10% increased stamina to yourself upon being attacked. His unique passive applies 5% fortify to all allies for one turn upon using a special skill. So with all those things said about Vengeance, I feel like he's going to, like... Oh, the fortified all allies. We're going to put him in good. We're going to put him in good because he has the fortify for all allies. He gives the counter attack. I just don't like that. This is a single target ally like that. I feel like holds him back so, so much. Uh, if that was just all allies, he could definitely be good. So, yep, Bongens, we're going to put him in A tier. That's where he's going to sit for now. The next character we're going to place is Captain of the Black Bulls, Yami Tsukihiro. This is the regular Yami. His first skill is called Continuous Slash. 
and it applies bleed to all enemies upon landing a successful crit attack, dealing continuous damage for two turns. Landing a crit should be fairly, you know, okay with this guy. His second skill is called Wind Slash. It stuns an enemy for one turn if they have an active bleed debuff. Attacks after applying 30% increased damage to yourself upon attacking a boss. So he gets an extra 30% damage against a boss, which is really, really good. That's solid. No other character does that much against a boss. That makes him really good. His third skill... His special skill, Dark Cloaked Lightless Slash, applies increased crit rate level 2 to yourself for two turns. So increasing your crit, then doing this up here uh, will be good because then you'll land the bleed. And so that's solid, right? And then after you land the bleed, you go and use this skill and you land the stun. I mean, it's just a good chain if you're using things in the right order. It's, it's really solid. It's a solid design kit. Has a 60% chance of applying bleed to an enemy, dealing continuous damage for two turns. Also, you can get a bleed here. So get a bleed here get crit rate up here you can get a bleed here if you get the bleed and you do this skill then you get the stun and then if you're attacking a boss you get an extra 30 percent damage like yami is a solidly designed character his first passive applies seven percent increased damage done when attacking a boss probably the strongest boss fighting character honestly insane his unique passive applies 15 percent increased crit damage like he's just he's so good he's so good and he's literally going to be the best character in the game right now for fighting bosses in my opinion so i feel like that has to put him in s tier right he's going to carry you through boss fights and there's not many other characters in the game who can you know do that so that yami definitely going in s tier lastly we have the seasonal yami to go over this guy absolutely insane i did some summons for him and uh ended up pulling him go check out that video if you guys haven't checked that out already it was so hype uh anyways his first skill double strike attacks after applying increased all attack to yourself if you have four more sp okay really good his second skill rose slice applies block hp recovery to all enemies for one turn they can't recover hp that's insane that's really, really good. That's really good. Only an SSR character that can do that applies SP plus one to yourself. So, I mean, oh, he's just so good. Teacher's Dignity is his special skill. Applies a three SP reduction to the enemy. Okay. Three SP reduction. Solid. Applies total silence to the enemy for two turns. Total silence total silence for two turns guys that right there it puts him in s tier that alone that alone puts him in s tier that is so good and then his first passive applies five percent increased damage done to yourself so he just gets extra damage like he's so good applies 15 percent increased favored damage to yourself like he's just so good he does so much damage he has a silence he increases his attack he blocks hp recovery you can't tell me this, Yami. It, he might arguably be the best character in the game. He is so good. Like, all the seasonal characters are very, very good. Two of the general pool uh, characters make it up into S tier as well. So that's good for them. Nobody's really in D or F tier yet for lax usefulness or completely useless. Right? Everybody has their place in the game in some shape or form. So they've done a good job with that, the designers of the game. We'll see if we end up with any characters who end up in D tier or F tier in the future. But that is the tier list for right now, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Should we be moving people up or down for the next video? And if you guys enjoyed this video, please go down there, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It massively helps me out when you guys do that. I am trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I need your guys' help. So please help me out. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.